One final announcement, girls. The annual meeting of the National Council of Women's Clubs is going to be held in New York at the end of next month. Now, we have already notified the council that the Washington Women's Club will be represented, as usual, by me. Or oh, whoever else happens to be president at the time. <laughs> now, if there's no further business... Mrs. Saunders. Oh, Miss Holstrom. I would like to discuss our plans for the charity ball. Oh, yes. Well, as chairman of the ball committee, I can tell you that our plans are very well advanced. You will all shortly be receiving letters giving you full details. Now, girls, it's getting late, so the chair makes a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor, aye. Opposed, no. Motion is carried. Meeting is adjourned. <laughs> I'd say you were gaveled down. <laughs> Too bad, Katie. You tried. Yeah, and I failed. Mildred is always firm. Polite, but firm. She seems to regard the club as her own private property. Oh, hello, Agatha. Hello, Mildred. Oh, Miss Holstrom, I do want you to know that the charity ball is being very well taken care of. Excuse me, Mr. Saunders, I would like to know how. Well, as a matter of fact, I'm going to run it just exactly the way I did last year. Last year was not one of our most successful affairs. Well, I, I don't have time for a full-blown discussion. I think a full-blown discussion is just what we need. I'm afraid I don't agree with you. Well, it is the democratic way. Well, elections are coming up soon. Nominations are open. You're perfectly free to vote for somebody else if you choose to. Now, you can't expect me to be more democratic than that, can you? Bye now, Irene. <laughs> Bye. I wish someone dared take her up on that. Yeah. I don't see why someone doesn't. Now, who would? Now, just a minute. Well, Dennis, what do you think? She looks like presidential timber to me. Do I hear a motion? Made. Seconded. Hail to the chief. <laughs> Is this meant to help Katie's campaign? What's the matter, Grandma? Take a look. A lot of people trying to obscure the issue. <laughs> what kind of public relations man are you? I thought public relations men just went out and had a bunch of free lunches. <laughs> a little work attached to it. We want readable publicity about Katie. Okay, Grandma, I can take a hint. We'll try again. <laughs> we'll try to get as much ink as possible on the paper and as little as possible on yourself. <laughs> Margo, do you have the club membership list? Charlotte, you have it. No, Agatha has it. Agatha has what? The membership list. No, oh, I gave it to Katie. I have it? Oh, here it is. We should have the boys run off copies. Oh, let's hold off that for the moment. They're having more trouble than Gutenberg with the first five books. <laughs> well, girls, since this is our first staff meeting, I would like to get your reactions to my ideas for an opening campaign statement. Shoot. <clears throat> the Washington Women's Club has become stagnant. Right, staff telling them. Too long have we done things in the same old, unproductive way. Too long have we neglected our destiny. Too long have we accepted tired leadership in a vital cause. Too long have we shunned the path that leads to greatness. How do you like it? Too long. <laughs> oh, I think it's marvelous. Mildred's in for a big surprise. We're gonna win. 
Oh, first, let's get started. The key to our success will have to be organization. Oh, Mrs. Morley has some wonderful campaign plans. Margot, you must handle the telephone. Call every member. Find out where we can count on the votes. What a campaign manager. Great. Uh, Charlotte, plant all the publicity you can in the local papers, the journals, the church magazines, and so forth, about Katie's campaign. We must build up her image. Right. I'll start just as soon as I get back from the big sale at Hanley's. <laughs> Charlotte, you'll have to forgo sales for the duration. <laughs> I guess even Lady Bird had to swear off during the campaign. <laughs> the boys will look after printing and distribution. I am going to concentrate on some little gatherings here where Katie can meet the voters in an informal way. Wonderful idea. Just coffee and cake. I was looking for a catchphrase. And I thought we'd call it... Clutches for Katie. Clutches <laughs> for Katie. <laughs> Absolutely fabulous. <laughs> How's this one, Grandma? Oh, good. I can read Katie's name. Well, this is fun. Can I have one of those machines for my birthday? <laughs> Somehow I doubt it. <laughs> I'd like to see Miss Holstrom, please. Oh, hello, Mr. Morley. How's it going? Well, I think Mildred Saunders is beginning to take me seriously. The crossing meetings have been quite successful. Oh, clutches for Katie. Clutches for Katie. Well, I always said that you would be simply great in the clutch. Oh, Mr. Morley. <laughs> I do appreciate you letting me use the study. It's been a big help. Well, I'm on your side. I'd like to see you win. Thank you. I'd also like to see you. There is a very fine movie down at one of the art theaters tonight. I know. I wish I could go with you, Mr. Morley, but I'm so busy. Katie, we haven't been out together in such a long time. Well, that's politics, as you know. All work and then uh, no play. Get you elected. The shoe has often been on the other foot. Oh, well, maybe once in a while. Well, often we could not make plans because you were busy or had to cancel plans already made. Well, I do think that that is a little different. I don't see how it's different different in the same way that the national government is different from the Washington Women's Club. Oh, and the club is not important, I suppose. But that has nothing to do with the club one way or the other. I just would like to have your company for the evening. Is that so terrible? No, it's very flattering. But what I don't find flattering is that you give only lip service to the idea that women have a contribution to make in our society. Well, I don't see why my desire for a date is a reflection on the women of America. It is, if you don't think their work is important. I didn't say that. You don't have to. It is obvious. As long as my work interferes with your personal life, my work is not important no, at all. No, you would rather go to the movies than see me get elected, wouldn't you? Well, it happens to be a very good movie. <laughs> and I turn purple. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Oh, sandwich is delicious. Mm. The coffee is wonderful. You sure throw a great clutch. Thank you. What did you think of my speech? It's very good. It's stimulating. I hoped it would be. Can I count on your support? Well, you could. Until yesterday. And in all honesty, I'm not sure now. Why is that? Well, it has to do with your personal life, if you don't mind my saying. Unfortunately, when one runs for office, one's personal life does enter into it. Exactly. Mildred Saunders makes that point in a letter to all the members. What is that point? Well, to put it simply, she says that as a settled, mature woman, she is ready, willing, and able to serve a two-year term as president without distractions. She asks if a single woman, young and pretty, can say the same. Well, I do not see why not. Well, you're not exactly a social hermit. No. It's been rumored that you've been dating a British writer and even a sultan. I'm no longer dating either one. 
and that you're more than a little interested in someone closer to home. Well, uh, it's very likely that within two years you'll marry. And as a honeymooning bride, your interests will hardly center on the club. It's just a diversionary tactic to distract from the main issue. Now, I will be available for a full term. But even so, Mrs. Saunders does have a point. I can only say there is no problem. The things stand now. But maybe you'll get lucky. <laughs> Anyone? Are you kidding? One more cup and I'm a casualty. <laughs> well, I know, I know what you mean, but politics demands sacrifices. Oh, sacrifice is one thing. Hyperacidity is another. <laughs> and we've still got four more clashes to go. You know, and if we don't have an answer from Mrs. Saunders, we're just wasting our time. And our coffee. <laughs> and our stomach. <laughs> plans when you do not know how to answer the charges. Mm. Well, we do have a professional in the house. Mr. Morley? Yeah, and you said he volunteered to help. Yeah, but that was before he found out it would interfere with his social life. <laughs> well, he's always been a man of his word. Why not get his advice? Well, I could ask him. Why not? No, yeah, why not? <laughs> Katie. Uh, Mr. Morley. Uh, what can I do for you? When I first got involved in running for office, you offered professional advice if needed. Well, it's needed. Uh -huh. Come in. Uh, sit down. Well, what seems to be the problem? Well, Mrs. Saunders is not making the campaign on the issues, since they're largely in my favor. Mm -hmm. She sounds like a clever politician. What is her approach? Well, that she's older, married, has a settled life, and is not likely to be distracted from club business. So? She says that I'm single, young, and, uh... And, uh, attractive? And likely to have many distractions in office. And how have you responded? Well, I've said it's not so, but obviously not very convincingly. Well, you must be convincing and positive. That is, if you really want to win the election. Of course I really want to be elected. All right. And there is a good way to handle this whole problem. What is that? Turn your liabilities into assets. Don't just deny. Take a positive approach. How? She has a home, a husband, children, probably grandchildren. These are distractions. These are what are sapping her interests in the club recently, causing her to be a less effective president than she was before. You, on the other hand, have none of that to contend with. You're a free agent. You have no outside interests, no, no social life to speak of. You are dedicated to the idea that a woman should take her place in society. A club career is your only goal. Yeah. Point out that you are not married and have no home of your own. These are advantages. Glory in them. Glory in them. Mrs. Chairman, Mrs. Saunders, fellow club members. In response to the questions raised by our president, I can say wholeheartedly, I'm completely free, unmarried, I have no home of my own, and I do not expect anything to arise to change the situation. Hello, Katie. So busy, I really haven't... Yes, I noticed. I guess I can look forward to that for the next two years. Well, I've taken on an obligation, and I have a responsibility. Yes, I know. I guess I'm lucky to be allowed to live here in Convention Hall. <laughs> I pledge to serve a two-year term, and I assure you, come what may, 
nothing will interfere with my directing all my energies toward revitalizing this charitable organization. Thank you. Strange as it may seem, men have obligations and responsibilities, too. <laughs> well, I'd say it looks good. Yeah. Close, but good. What's the matter? I feel like this room looks. Oh, you're tired. Oh, it's more than that. I'm depressed. Why? Katie, you shouldn't keep secrets from your campaign manager. All right. I'm depressed because it looks good. Oh. When it all started, it seemed like the right thing to do. It seemed someone had to do it. I never thought of winning, actually. And now, who knows? I may have obligated myself for two years. It's in a good cause. No. And if elected, I will do my best. I will not let my personal life interfere with my job, but my job will interfere with my personal life. It already has. I must confess the same thought has occurred to me lately. There is one possible solution. Yeah? We've accomplished a great deal. Mildred is a very good president when she wants to be. We've shaken her up. We could, um, slacken the campaign. You mean let her win? Oh, Mrs. Morley. Only at the lesser of two evils. Well, I cannot do that. <laughs> Anything can happen in an election. Oh. Might even be won by someone who would prefer to be distracted. <laughs> Off to the meeting? Yes, even the campaign manager has to vote. <laughs> will we know the results tonight? Mm -hmm. The only order of business is the election, and the votes will be counted immediately after. Uh -huh. Hi, Katie. Hello, Mr. Morley. Well, I guess this is it. Yeah, this is it. If you win, will we ever see you at all? I will still be the governor. Yes, but you won't have a moment to call your own. If I win, it was your advice that did it. There are times when I wish I weren't quite so smart. <laughs> Good luck. I think. I'll keep my fingers crossed. We'll see you at the inauguration. <laughs> Hello, lady. Hello. Hello. Well, the moment of truth has arrived. Oh, and I'm very nervous. Oh, my dear. A good candidate is never supposed to admit that. But I am, too. <laughs> With all the campaigns behind me, so am I. Well, I must say you have given me a good run. And a little something to think about. <laughs> Win or lose, it's been a good campaign. Yes, it has. Good luck, Katie Holstrom. And good luck to you, Mrs. Saunders. Mr. Morley. Oh, hi, Kitty. The results in? Yeah. Now, don't tell me. One look at you is enough. Congratulations. Mr. Morley, I lost. <laughs> you lost? Yeah, I lost by one vote. Oh, let me be the first to congratulate you. Oh, it is good to have you back. Oh, it's good to be back. And to have accomplished something, too. I think Mrs. Saunders will be a much better president now. I couldn't care less. Mr. Morley, the Washington Women's Club can be a very important force in our community. It's not just... A group of gabbing women. I couldn't agree with you more. 
In fact, one of their members is probably the most delightful woman in the world. Oh. And if she will promise to forego politics for the rest of the evening, I promise to take her out and celebrate her defeat. That's the best offer a losing candidate ever had. <laughs> I think I'm learning to be a good loser. <laughs> oh, Mother, you're still up. I think so. <laughs> oh, I am glad to see you two have time for each other again. Yes, we're delighted too. <laughs> so am I. I'll fix some tea if anybody wants it. I could do a spa. Anything but coffee. <laughs> <laughs> well, had a good time. Oh, just great. Like it used to be before the campaign. I'm glad. That was a close call. They don't come any closer. One vote. I don't suppose I'll ever know who to thank for keeping Katie out of office, but I sure am grateful. <laughs> thank me. You? I told you a campaign manager had to vote. I didn't say for whom. <laughs> Tonight at 8 Eastern, a journey through the first year of life on American Baby. Then at 9, a provocative look at the issues and events shaping our lives on the 700 Club. Now stay with us for the Fanny Duke Show next on CBN.